shifters, entrepreneurs on the move, with your host, Amanda Barr, bringing you power-packed 15-minute conversations with entrepreneurs who share their stories of shifting in life and business to keep on the move. Episode number five, I've got Florence Chung, Chief Engagement Officer of the Hetty Group, a community engagement consultancy specializing in creating safer communities, and a dear friend. I'm excited to have you on the show, Florence, today. Welcome. Thanks, Amanda. Glad to be on with you. Yes, I know. And please, I know that I, I know you personally, but can you share a little bit of your backstory and how you got to be the Chief Engagement Officer at the Hetty Group? Sure. So uh, it's been a long journey. So I would say in the last 20 years, I've worked in the community in all kinds of aspects through nonprofit work. I worked in the community through city government work and then worked in the community through the corporate world. And before starting the Hetty Group, I was managing one of Target Corporation's corporate social responsibility initiatives uh, the one that involved forming strategic partnerships with government public safety officials to help create safer communities. And that was a fantastic role in my career. And, you know, though I've worked in the private sector, nonprofit sector, and the public sector and government, the through line was that I was always involved with social, some sort of social impact work in the community. So yeah. now I run a community engagement consulting firm in Los Angeles called the Hetty Group. And people always say, okay, what does that mean? Right. And we help create safer organizations and safer communities. Um, and we work with major fortune 500 companies and law enforcement and public safety related nonprofits to develop strategies and initiatives to utilize community engagement as a way to create a better and safer community. So think of community engagement as a cross between public affairs and community relations, stakeholder relations, uh, corporate social responsibility. We bring all these various disciplines into the services that we provide for our clients. And so we're ultimately at the end of the day, we're providing a lot of external relations work um, for clients that want to create safer organizations within their company and for their employees yeah. and working with law enforcement to help. You know, we're trying to make uh, communities a better place for everyone to live and work. Yes. In. Now, I, I love it, and I love the platform, and I love what you're doing. And obviously, I know there's a lot of people out there that want safer communities. They're living in communities and would love Pride and know how you, they could get involved with you on their in their neck of the woods. But tell us, you know, you were working with a big corporation and you've got experience and you decided to branch out and take your skills and take your knowledge and do it on your own. So can you tell us a little bit about that shift of, you know, you're, you're working sure. with a big company and said, I want to do it on my own. Yes. I was a little crazy back then. <laughs> no, I mean, it was about five and a uh, I would say five and a half years ago. Um, that was a, a first major shift in my career. I mean, going from nonprofit to government work to the corporate world, those are shifts. But I think when you branch yeah. out onto your own, that is the biggest shift because you leave a steady paycheck, uh, some stability, and you get into the unknown, right? Yeah. Um, I, I moved to New York City in my mid-30s to pursue a different kind of life. I left everything behind, and from a professional standpoint, I was looking for a corporate community relations type of job when I got to New York City. But I decided, hey, I took a risk to move out here in my mid-30s. Might as well take one more risk and go out on my own and build a consulting <laughs> company. What yeah. else? Can, what could I lose if it doesn't work out? I just go to, you know, go find a job, right? Yeah. So – that was a very big risk for me, but I did it for myself. Um, and, you know, I, I started the Hetty Group and, and launched with one client in New York City and um, worked with that one client and then built built it up. And I was bi-coastal between L.A. and New York. And a couple of years ago, I brought the practice back to Los Angeles, which is home for me. And then we yeah. grew the business. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I took on all kinds of clients and projects uh, from in the beginning, spanning right. nonprofit work to philanthropy advisory to management consulting to event planning to public affairs. <laughs> it almost seemed like I was 
right. throwing spaghetti on the wall to see what would stick. But um, I would say yeah, with that major shift, it took me probably a good three years into the business where, uh, you know, three years to take um, another risk and shift again. <laughs> if we're talking about shifting, I mean, yes. it took me no, a few I years. Um, I had to make another shift to focus. Because there was so much that I wanted to do that I felt like I could offer a lot of different types of services of value to the clients I was working with. But right. you know, a lot of entrepreneur um, kind of coaches and mentors told me that's not really a fast track for success if you're doing, if you're all things to all people. Right. You know, <laughs> and, you know, the whole throwing spaghetti on the wall to see what sticks. A lot of people, a lot of startups, actually do that at the beginning and people warned me people who were much more seasoned than I was um, you know warned me about that and said Florence you need to at some point focus but I think for me I needed to go through that process myself and see for myself to see what worked and eventually I evolved to a point where I felt comfortable saying no uh, to projects and being selective and declining new business if it didn't uh, kind of fit the criteria I had set for myself. So um, deciding to focus on creating safer organizations and safer communities um, and not focus on technology or, you know, other social issues out there, um, that took, I think, uh, a moment of clarity for me, and that was a very deliberate shift that I made in my career. Can you explain just a little bit more? Because I know there there um, are those out there that are going, well, should I go specific or not? And you said you got clarity around it. What was kind of that mm-hmm. aha moment that said, you know what, this is what I want to do. This is what I, I either I love or this is what I'm good at. What was that deciding factor that was like, this is why and this is why I'm going to do it and I can do it and, you know, from there on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would say, I mean, there were a couple things. I, I don't know if there was one kind of a momentous occasion that created the shift, but I think they were a collection of moments. And I think when anyone is considering going through a shift, I think a lot of times that moment happens when there's discomfort. And mm. so I was going through a period of discomfort when I'm thinking, okay, how do I scale the business? I'm asking myself. How do I, you know, uh, go go deeper? Should I go deeper or wider, right? And, right. I, and at some point, I came to a decision of instead of going a mile wide and an inch deep, right? We have mm-hmm. to we have to focus in order for us to um, give ourselves the opportunity to grow some true depth. And I was even without deliberately or strategically thinking through things, I was already working in the public safety, safe communities arena. But I thought, okay, if I actually focused and strategically paid attention to it, that would help the business much and and get us on the fast track, Um, more so than um, being reactive and, you know, anytime clients came approaching, I would say yes if I felt like I could be helpful to them. But that's more reactive and not necessarily proactive. And so I would say um, when I was confronted with the discomfort, the fact that I only have 24 hours in a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't clone myself. Uh, right. So how do I, I can't do all these things I would love to do and to help all these clients. I can't. And so how do I meter my time? And what's the best use of my time were the questions I had to ask myself. And so in moments of discomfort, when I was being pulled in so many different directions, in moments of discomfort, when I was trying to figure out how to scale the business, that's when I had to sit back and really think through you know, and evaluate, evaluate what I'm good at, what my team is good at, what our capacity was. You know, you just have to evaluate amongst a whole set of criteria and then, you know, be uh, Mm self-aware, assess the situation and make some really uh, strategic and specific decisions. And I had to go through that several years ago. And that's when we started building up um, internal programs like our Coptics program, our Police Foundation Partners program, our new TRX uh, training exchange program that are all, you know, 
they all fit the same theme of creating safer communities. And so um, it, it's, we get to go, you know, 20 inches deep now instead of you know, trying to go wide. <laughs> now, you, and, and when did that major shift happen where you said, no, I'm going to really focus? And, and that, when did that kind of happen where you go, okay, I know this is what I'm doing, and then what's happened since then? Because I know that sometimes, you know, you're in the moment and you're deciding and you're like, I don't know what's going to happen when I decide to actually – take on this new way of doing my business, you don't know until you actually put it into action. So what has happened since and when did you make that shift? Mm. Yeah, good question. So I think um, for for us, it wasn't a, a let's say, a certain week uh, or a certain day in t- uh, at a certain point in time. A progression. At first, it was, a, <clears throat> it was a progression. It was a little bit gradual, but it was kind of taking baby steps in a certain direction. Mm. And then um, at some point, there was a season, I'll say, about uh, it's about three years ago when we, is when we started uh, shifting focus to focus. And yeah. then about two, two years ago, between two years ago until about a year and a half ago, there was a season when we were really um, honing in, right? So uh, declining a business if it didn't fit the model, um, taking on more, uh, networking, taking on more that do fit the model, um, networking right. with individuals and entities that fit the model and our channel. Um, and so it was a progression, but, you know, over over the last several years, I mean, we've been around for five and a half years, but only in the last, let's say, two years, two and a half years, have we been really building our focus out. What has that meant for us? <clears throat> Basically, it um, helps us to build a, a subject matter expertise, right? And I think yeah. that's something to... Um, to to learn and something to consider for a lot of startups out there and those who are maybe um, you know starting out. We're we're not we haven't been around uh, too long five and a half years and a couple years in New York and a couple years in Los Angeles. But um, you know it was a lesson that I had to learn to shift and focus and it was it was a bit painful because there are opportunity costs. You feel like when you say no that you're losing out on something, right. but you have to keep yeah, the focus on the, the <laughs> long term, say, yes, I may not be saying yes to this client and working on this cool project. However, I am building something toward a different direction. I have to keep my eye on that price in order mm-hmm. to keep the discipline <laughs> to keep building in a specific direction. So it's worked out well for us. I'm, I'm really happy with the direction. Now we have to go through a specific kind of a rebrand of the Hetty Group to ensure that focus is better communicated to the public. Um, yeah. But again, I think with any, um, any uh, business owner, you're constantly evolving. You know? Right. So and I'm, I just I'm evolving. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to, you know, I know that um, I wanted to touch one moment. You came into your own role and your, you opened this company with experience in the field. Um, but what, what have you gone through emotionally on that side? Like how, how have you taken that shift of um, being somebody else, working for somebody else, and now, now you are the owner of, of your own operation? How has that been on, on the personal side? You know, I would say it's a roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> a roller coaster, and there are a range of emotions that I have experienced <laughs> that I never thought that I would in my professional life. But you go from um, just the sense of empowerment, and uh, you know, you feel great. You feel like you're in charge of your own destiny. And for a person, a personality like mine, uh, that works for me because yeah. I. Kill, kill what I eat. I make sure I make things happen. I, I have to go make it rain, right? Yeah. And then, but at times, it's also a lonely road. You don't have uh, a ton of coworkers. You don't have a lot of people uh, who are on that same journey, going through the same challenges. And it's important, I think, uh, for people to seek out those that are on similar journeys. And I think maybe your podcast can be helpful to those who are on this journey. Um, to hear from people who are, you know, go on on the path. Um, but emotions, yeah. I mean, I feel, I'm feeling empowered and, and elated to feeling lonely and uh, I would say um, having doubt, doubtful moments, 
questioning myself, am I on the right path? Should I, should I go get that big corporate job? <laughs> yeah. Know? Wow. Instead, uh, <laughs> should I quit? Uh, should I quit or keep going? And there are a lot of things that have gone through my mind, and it's been a roller coaster of a ride. But it—I'll tell you one thing: it has not been boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you for just opening up. I know that's—you know—it's hearing those things. I think people think that oh, they hear the stories of everybody being successful, and in hearing that no, you, you're feeling these things. You think these things that you're going to, and you're having to choose. You know, how are you going to take the next step? And you know, just want to wrap this up. If you um, could give one piece of advice to an entrepreneur to keep them on the move, because you definitely have kept on the move five years in the business. Hats off to you. You are rolling. You're focused and. And it's a game on. You've got so much to accomplish and you've got a great niche to be in. So what would be that one piece of advice that you'd give somebody else that might be starting out or even in the middle? Um, yeah, yeah. I would say, uh, you know, shifts are important, but they, I, I think they happen organically. I talked about discomfort earlier. I would say one piece of advice is to be in a constant state of evaluation of yourself and your business and the impact that you're having. Constant doesn't mean every day. That'll be exhausting. But <laughs> you, you don't want to let six months pass yeah. by without you evaluating and assessing where you are and where you're going. Life is short. And in the business world as you're building, um, you know, six months, a lot can happen in six months. And um, for me, what's been helpful is to constantly be assessing and evaluating where I am, where the business is going, uh, take on business mentors um, and, and business coaches, and be alert. You know, we can kind of get tunnel visioned in our own worlds, kind of building the business and being so focused. But I think taking a step back and evaluating um, so that we can allow for shifts to happen would be really important. Because I love uh, you that. want to. Yeah, you want to evolve. <laughs> yes, and I think when you get that chance yeah. to really look back, you get to not look at it emotionally, but look at it as, mm -hmm. you know, from a facts and figures and what happened and what didn't happen and what were the results and was that worth my time, money, and effort and mm -hmm. and taking a real choice going forward. So I uh, would love to have the audience know how to get a hold of you, Florence. So if they're looking to have you um, maybe – if it matches your niche um, to help with the safer communities and, and the projects you're working on and, and to connect with you directly, how can they do that? Yeah, um, you know, your audience, feel free to contact me directly at Florence at HettyGroup.com or, or we have information on our website as well. We'd love to invite your audience to come check us out at uh, www.HettyGroup.com. And, awesome. uh, you know, yeah. I know. Well, we <laughs> yeah, and we're cheering you on and all you're doing, and, and thank you again. I just want to – it means the world to me that you're on, on the podcast and sharing your story and sharing your light to the world and making a difference in so many communities. What you do goes beyond you, and and we see it. So hats off, Florence. Mm -hmm. You're amazing. <laughs> thank you, Amanda. Right. Thanks for the opportunity. I appreciate right. it. Awesome. And keep on the move. Bye. We hope you enjoyed the episode today. We appreciate each one of you for listening and hope you left inspired and motivated to keep on the move. If you think this episode might help or inspire someone else, please share. Don't forget to subscribe and keep in the loop to hear more incredible stories of entrepreneurs like yourself on the move. Thank you for our supporters, RTB Capital Group, Financial Powerhouse, Callcast, and Power Podcasting. Now, get out there and keep on the move.